Welcome back, everybody. And we're here today with me, Stacey Chilemi, your host. And I am here to speak with someone who is part of our community. She is has her own podcast on The Advisor with Stacey Chilemi. And she is just amazing. She is a self-discovery coach. And her name is Claire, and she also specializes in astrology. So she has a lot to offer. And today she wanted to talk about when you're stuck in autopilot mode. You know, so many people are uh, fear change and they just don't know how to get out of that autopilot pilot mode and they have so much to offer in the world. She's going to show you how to get out of that mode and she's going to show you how you can move forward in your life and be the person you want to be, that new version of you. And she's going to also show you how you can incorporate astrology into that and the new eclipse is coming. So she's going to tell you a little about that and what it means for you. So Claire, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm very excited to have you here today. I'm excited. Thank you for having me back. I'm I'm like always down for this conversation. So <laughs> now, you know, all, you know, so many people are stuck in autopilot mode. You know, was there a time in your life where you kind of, you know, because you broke out of that mode, you know, was there a time when you kind of felt stuck in autopilot mode and you were fearful of change and you just didn't know how to get out of it? And then you finally found the answer. Can you share that with us? For sure. And I, I want to be clear that I think the the answer to get out of that mode is probably going to be different and situational for every person. But for me, I think just to take it all the way back, I think it started with that, uh, oh my gosh, I'm living in autopilot realization. That was the first wave of, you know, just devastation for lack of a better word that yeah. really I experienced when I realized that I was. I don't think I I knew that I had been living in autopilot, you know, because I hadn't had the time to slow down and take a look at my life or I hadn't given myself the time and space to do that. And I think like a lot of people, the second we were on lockdown in 2020, yeah, it hit me real quick. I think it had been kind of percolating under the surface, this realization that I wasn't very fulfilled and I wasn't very happy and maybe this path that I had taken wasn't right. But, you know, like I said, you just don't, but the way most of our lives are in today's world, especially in the USA, I yeah. had no time to sit and think about this. I was working all the time. Then I would come home and then I would make dinner and then I would have a nice meal with my husband and go to bed and wake up and do it again the next day. And the second that our patterns were disrupted so abruptly and so drastically during lockdown, I had this perspective shift that once I saw what my life was and had become, I couldn't unsee it. And it became really, really hard as we did start to, obviously there was a lot that happened in between, but as we did start to kind of transition back into some sense of normalcy, and I was so terrified of staying in this state of waking up every day and doing some version of the same thing that I did yesterday. And yeah. quite frankly, not liking what that was. I think that was like the overarching piece of it. I think there's one, one level of autopilot when you actually like your job, you like all your circumstances, all of that. And you're like, oh, I maybe need to like spice up my life a little bit. I think I've got, I've gotten in a groove and like halted my growth yeah, that was true on one hand. But for me, it was the whole added level of wait, I'm doing the same thing every day. And I also don't like what I'm doing every day. Uh -huh. And I hadn't had the clarity to realize that up to that point. So I think for me personally, that's why I say I think it's different for everyone. A big part of actually finding that willingness to break out of that space of comfort of, of uh, autopilot, which is really just being in your comfort zone because <laughs> it's become yeah. so habitual to you. It's predictable. Our brains love that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I had the willingness to actually break out of my comfort zone despite being totally terrified because I didn't like what my comfort zone had become. Yeah. And as scary as it was to leave it, it honestly, it was a lot scarier for me to stay. You know, I could relate to that. You know, it, it's, you know, I got to a point in my life where I, I just like looked in the mirror, looked at my life and I said, you know what, 
this is not where I want to be. And I knew deep inside, I think, I think, you know, really when you, if you really look at it, you know, on a spiritual basis, you know, your body, your mind, your thoughts, your, your inner instincts is telling you it's time to unstuck yourself. It's time to move on and change. And I think, you know, it's that, that, that fear of people not wanting to change there that is that fear factor so many people are so their lives are disrupted by fear because they're afraid to move on and they're afraid to be who they really were meant to be because of fear now for you know i can't tell you how many people write in and 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 and, and send messages to us about get it over the fear so how do people get over the fear yeah, it's, again, I do think it's definitely situational. And and for me, it was really about discomfort. Like yeah. it truly, it was about picking the greater fear for me. Yeah. Like I, like I just said, it really was a moment. I had this wave of realization after wallowing for quite a while, let me just say. And by wallowing, I mean, I was doing a lot of self-discovery, a lot of exploration. I was going to therapy. I was like doing all of these things, but at the same time, nothing in my daily life was changing. I wasn't actually taking any action to shift any of my circumstances. I was just kind of getting self-help, if you will, yeah. which I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But at the end of the day, if something in your life needs to change, that's the only thing that's probably going to actually bring you the peace that you're seeking. And for me, it was really about being super honest with myself. I think that's a huge factor and will be the case for anybody, regardless of your circumstances, when you're going through that type of a, that internal dilemma where you have to be honest with yourself at a certain point and say, Hey, it's actually a lot scarier to continue living the way that I have been than it is to actually do something different, even though my brain is telling me that that's dangerous and yeah. I don't know what's on the other side. It's like, if breaking free from what feels suffocating to you is what's going to happen when you take that step outside of your comfort zone, it doesn't really matter what happens right. on the other side because it's worth that alone. In yes. my experience, it was for sure. And something that since that period, I didn't necessarily have this when I was going through it, but something that I've been able to reflect on and now is more my perspective now that I've had the firsthand experience, I guess I'll say, yeah. of stepping outside of my comfort zone, yeah. I've had a million different waves of this since then, as, as yeah. you do once you step outside of your comfort zone. The, the waves keep coming, but you're ready for them and you're able to take them in stride in a different way. And now I think of it so much more as expanding the bounds of my comfort zone, not stepping outside of it. I'm like, wow, my yeah. comfort zone is starting to actually feel really constricting when I start getting that urge to step outside of it, even if it's scary. It's like, maybe if I actually think of it as expanding the bounds of my comfort zone versus right. stepping outside of it, it's a little bit less scary when you view it that yeah. way. And it genuinely has helped me as I've continued to just push the boundaries and grow right. since then. Yeah. You know, there's so many people, they, they are stuck and they are, they are so, even though they are unhappy and they are so fearful of that other side. And I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, really, if you're suffocating, what do you got to lose? You know, really think about it. You know, if you're in a life that just doesn't bring you joy, doesn't bring you happiness, you're waking up in the morning, you're just not liking who you are. You're not liking your life. You're not liking where you're headed. You know, what do you have to lose? You know, and if there are people in your life that are holding you back and discouraging you, then maybe it's time to maybe consider letting go of those people because, you know, the first person that you really have to think about is yourself. You know, you know, people feel like that's selfish and they feel something Sometimes that, you know, it, you know, shameful of even admitting that, you know, they need to take care of themselves before others. But if you're sitting there and you can only live life in, in the lowest, you know, dimension possible, you're unhappy and you're sad and you're not feeling good and your self-worth is damaged, you know, you really need to look at yourself and say, okay, you know, maybe it is time to change. Maybe it is time to, you know, because that this fear that's holding me back is just not making me who I want to be 
and it's it's, it's destroying me. And then look around and see the energies around you. And, and are they good energies or are they bad energies? Because sometimes, you know, it's sad to say, but sometimes the people around us get envious of us. And they don't want to see you succeed because they want you on their level or lower. That way they feel better of themselves because they're dealing with these issues. So sometimes it's better just to say, you know what, they're not positive impacts on my life. So I need to just maybe just detach, you know, and move on and find people that are going to encourage me to be the person I want to be. And I think that could help too with the unstuck process. 100%. I think there's different variations of how those relationship dynamics are likely to shift or maybe need to shift in these types yeah. of situations. But the reality is it's very, very likely that that will be a part of that process of growing yeah. and of shifting and of getting outside of your comfort zone, whether it's putting boundaries in place, whether it's having a really hard conversation that you've been putting off, whether it's full-blown cutting people out of your life, like you just mentioned. I think there's a lot of different ways that that can show up, but I know I had to do all of those things in different areas with different people. Yeah. And I also feel like I was very private in my growth as well, because to your point, I think one of the most challenging things of those transitional periods is that you oftentimes have the clarity that something needs to change before you understand why, before you can articulate the reasoning behind why you're feeling called to do this or, you know, really feel like you can adequately explain yourself if somebody's going to ask you questions about it. And I think yeah. the, the challenging thing, and I know I experienced this a lot firsthand, is that there are people in your life that are going to be well-meaning and they are going to be very well-intentioned and want to support you and want you to succeed. But it's really hard for them in fairness to do that when you can't tell them what's going on and you don't know what's happening and you don't know why you're feeling so called to kind of implode your life and yeah. take a different path. And I know that was probably one of the most challenging parts of my experience. And one of the reasons that I was very private with it until I was able to be honest enough with myself and take accountability for my own role and where I had gotten up to that point yeah, that I could actually speak on it from a, you know, relatively neutral standpoint, not feeling so emotionally charged. And like, I had to jump on the defense the second somebody asked me a question about why I was making all of these changes. Right. And I think we we always get to a point of our life where we do feel a little defensive, you know, and then you have to come to realize that I don't need to defend myself. You know, I am who I am. And this is this is who I want to be, because a lot of times people have they feel a need that they have to debate and they have to defend themselves. But the only person that you have to really satisfy is yourself. If you're happy with who you are, what in the direction you're going, then that's all that matters, because really, like we go back to self-care and self-love again. It's number uno. You know, you're not here to satisfy others. You're not here to play out others, other people's lives. You're here to play your own life and you need to decide decide what pathway you want to go on. You know, if that pathway feels right and it's meant for you, then follow it, go with it, you know, and see, you know, where it takes you because you know, feeling, you know, there feeling stuck is a horrible feeling, but if you really think about what you want in life and you really plan your destiny out and you really, you know, say, okay, I'm suffocating. Let's take that bag off. I'm ready. You know, I don't want to feel like this anymore. And just go. You don't know what's ahead, but just go with your, your inner instincts, go with what your mind is telling you and do it, you know, and, and it may not pan out because I know most of the things in my life did not pan out the way I, I thought they were going to be. But in, in the end run, it actually turned out to be better, you know? So sometimes we just have to take that roll of the dice and just go with it and see what happens, you know, because I always believe everything is meant to be, you know, so the changes in our lives are meant to be, and we need to take them with stride. We need to just look at them, learn from them, acknowledge them and use them as a piece to make ourselves stronger and better people and just take that information and just apply it to our lives, maybe even to help others too. Yes, just yes to all of that. 
<laughs> and I, I think honestly, I think it goes back to what our our initial conversation on the last time I was on the podcast was we talked a lot about core values. And yeah, that was a huge part of my process was figuring out because I had gotten so disconnected from myself along my journey before I realized I was living on autopilot. Part of that yeah. process was just going through the motions every single day, doing what was expected of me. And I got to this point where I was like, oh my gosh, I am a grown adult and I have no idea what I care about in my life. I have no idea yeah. what I personally value versus what other yeah. people have told me to value. And that was a really scary thing. And I think when I was able to get clear on that, which took me a minute because I had gotten so disconnected from myself yeah. and it did take a lot of, you know, solo processing for lack of a better way of putting it. That's not something that you want to ask other people for their advice on when you're getting clear on what you personally care about. Yeah. That was really a, a moment where it did shift for me when I was having those conversations. People were seeing that I was changing very rapidly, yeah. whether I was saying it out loud or not. So the conversations were getting to the point where I was going to have to have them whether I wanted to or not. Yeah. And they stopped being so defensive when I did get crystal clear on why I was actually doing them, regardless of the outcome of why I was taking the steps I was taking. To yeah. your point, I think it's very common in, in most people's situations. Things aren't going to pan out the way that you envision them, at least not to a T. And yeah. I think the more that we attach to a really specific outcome, the more we're kind of setting ourselves up for failure with a really specific outcome in mind yeah. where it's so much more about why are you trying to get that outcome in the first place? What do you think that's going to bring you? How can you fold that into your life right now with the actions yeah. you're taking? And once I got clear on that and what I actually cared about, like for me, there's several other things, but one of the main one always is coming back to freedom for me yes. in all areas of my life. Like yes. financial freedom, time, energetic, being able to show up as myself, no matter where I am, all of those right. things. And when I got clear on that, I was like, there's, why would I feel the need to defend that? That is very yeah. reasonable. And if somebody has a hard time seeing that, quite frankly, I don't probably want to have conversations with that person all the time anyway, because that's a really exactly. okay thing to, to have as a value. And it, it makes it a lot easier for me to explain why I need to leave my current situation, yes. even though people are looking at me like I'm crazy. Right. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I, you know, it's, it's so important to be able to be yourself, to be who you are. And so many people feel, you know, there are situations where they hide who they are because they're afraid that the people around them are going to reject them or not like them, you know, and we shouldn't care about what those people think. We shouldn't care about that rejection. You know, when people are saying negative things about us, or if people are rejecting us, or if people don't like the person we're becoming, then they're not real friends because a real friend, or someone who really cares is going to like you or love you no matter what, you know? So if you have to tippy toe around them, then you really should like double think about who you're hanging out with and who you're spending all your time with. Are these people really, do they have your back? Do they have, do they really benefit from, you know, do you really benefit from these people's presence? Because it doesn't look like they really, you know, have your back, you know, and you want people that have your back and that are going to catch you when you fall and throw you up in the air so you can catch that next step of the ladder, you know, and those are the people that you want, you know, you know, following you and being around you and encouraging you. We shouldn't have to hide ourselves. We shouldn't have to make believe we're someone we're not because of the people around us because they, we think that they want us to act a certain way. So we have to be that person. No, we don't. We get to be ourselves, you know, and I, I think that you're an example of that, you know, not code, you know, kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I have so many thoughts coming up around that. Cause I was a huge, a huge part of my process was like really realizing where I was masking, where I was people pleasing, where I was kind of pandering to what I knew the other people wanted from me. And there's so much of my, of that in my birth chart as well, which speaks to why that is a part of who I am. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot of shame that comes up around it first of all. And, and I think the other part too, that I personally believe and have, has brought me a lot of peace. I think as I have started making some big changes in my life, 
Yeah. Is I do believe that there are some relationships that are meant to weather the test of time and they're meant to stay with you. And I think there's some that serve a really beautiful purpose in your life, but they're, it's not even like there's any ill will there, yeah. but they might not be meant to grow with you in a certain direction. And I think those were some of the most challenging ones for me during that transitional period where it was like, it's not even so much a lack of support. It's just that I don't even want to force you to like the changes that I'm making. I don't want yeah. you to feel like you have to support this. If it doesn't yeah. jive with you, that's okay. Yeah. And I think that's something I can say with ease now, but going through it in the moment, it was really hard for me to grieve some of those relationships that I had very deep, beautiful relationships with people. Yeah. And there was there was no like, you know, quote unquote breaking point there. Yeah. It was yeah. just that we started to, go grow in different paths. Yeah. And that's really challenging, but I think that's a that's something that's brought me a lot of peace now when yeah. I do have such a commitment to my own personal growth and evolution. I can honor that like if something's starting to feel like it's being outgrown on either end of a relationship, we are allowed to grieve it, but it's yeah. not it's not something that should stop you. From continuing right. your and I, you know, I, I can relate to that to a T because I've had, you know, in the last year or two, I've had relationships that I thought were so bonded, we were so close. And as I started to change, and I just like life took its toll, and we just started to go in different directions. And what we had before was not what the current present moment, our friendship was not like that anymore. And, you know, and sometimes you could just, you know, hello and goodbye. And sometimes, you know, you don't talk to them because sometimes you get on the phone or you see them, you either have nothing to talk about or you could feel the animosity in between. You can feel maybe the other person is not, either they, they can't relate or maybe there is a little envy or jealous or, you know, and it, you could just feel the vibe, you know? So, you know, unfortunately, you know, sometimes you can get into these great relationships. You think you're going to be with them the rest of your lives. They're going to be your best buddy. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, as time goes on, it's just like your teeth shifting, you know, you go to the dentist, they're like, okay, your teeth shifted. We need to do this procedure. You know, it's like, when did this happen? You know, you just don't see it. And it just happens, you know what I mean? And you know what, you know, I have a friend and, and he had mentioned that, you know, friends are not always meant to be forever. You have maybe a very small percentage where you can go back to your childhood years and say, I grew up with this kid and, you know, they're still my friend. But for the most part, people enter your life for a certain amount of time. There's a purpose and then they journey out. And that's how you have to look at friendships and not have any expectations. And, you know, and I think that's sometimes we lose, we don't think of it like that. But when you do think of it like that, wow, you know, it kind of takes that, that pain. Cause I'm sure you felt that pain as the friendship started to dwindle, you know, it's like, you know, what's happening, you know, and you kind of want to hold on to it, but it's not the best thing to hold on to. And you know, it deep inside, but you're still thinking about all those great moments you probably had with that person. Right. For sure. And I think that's the exactly what you mentioned of what it is now is not what it once was. And I think that's that's where you have to realize what are you even holding on to? Right. <laughs> you know, you're holding on yeah. to the memories which are going to be there, whether you stay connected with this person in the way that you have been or not. Yeah. Right. And I think, yeah, it's been very liberating to take that viewpoint. And, and feel that way. I think it's, it's doesn't make it easy. Let's be clear. Right. Anytime it oh, comes yeah. up still no. to this day, it is, it still feels like a loss. It still feels yeah. challenging. It still requires awkward conversation <laughs> sometimes yes. for that scenario to, to occur. And I think it's funny that we're talking about this right now and that we've kind of taken this path because this is so, so in line with the eclipse that's happening in two days. It's in Libra. It's all about relationships. It's conjunct Lilith, which is the planet of like, I need to take accountability for my actions, for my life. If I am letting somebody keep me from my desires and my needs, whether it's like a draining one-sided relationship that needs some boundaries put in place, or whether it's a situation where you've been kind of 
allowing somebody to keep you in a box for lack of a better way of putting it. Yeah. That's the theme of what's coming up on a collective level this week, but especially if you have placements in Libra, like everyone is kind of feeling what we're talking about right now yeah. where things are, those relationships are coming to a head basically where it's like, I've maybe wanted to keep the peace in the past because yeah. It felt better that way. It felt more harmonious that way. Right. I've attached to a, a certain reality that no longer exists, you know, fill in the blank. But I think what's coming up right now on a collective level is if this is halting my growth, if this feels suffocating to me, if I feel shackled or drained by this relationship, yeah. something's got to give. And yes. I think the the biggest thing to note here is like, that's going to happen whether you play a role in it or not. Right. Now go a little bit more in depth about the eclipse because, you know, people hear about it. Astrologers are always talking about it when the eclipse comes, you know, there's a lot of information out there, but people who aren't, don't understand astro astrology completely. Can you explain a little bit more about the eclipse, the meaning, the significance of it? And, you know, and like you were just talking about today, how it, this one relates towards more towards the Libra. What does it mean? So maybe people will know when their time comes, when their eclipse comes, what to expect and what's out there for them. For sure. And I'll, I'll try not to go like too deep down the rabbit hole of astrology here. I, I like to make it. I know. Okay. <laughs> we'll make it digestible here. Like, okay. All right. I think the biggest thing to note is eclipses get so hyped up because it's always a full moon or a new moon. So just keep that in mind. It's still just a full moon or a new moon, which happens every single month. Yeah. But it's when the full moon or new moon is coming in contact with the North Node or the South Node. And mm -hmm. these are not physical objects. They yeah. are these kind of mathematical points in astrology. Mm -hmm. So really all you need to know about this is in relation to earth, it's where the sun's path and the moon's path are crossing and intersecting with one another. And if you yeah. know nothing yeah. about astrology, you can probably guess that the sun and the moon would play a pretty big role in who you are if you're looking at a birth chart. So yeah. that's why these moments get so hyped up. They happen every single year, but it's really about looking at what sign they are happening in to understand if it's going to be impacting you personally in a big way or not. Right. I'm not saying that you won't feel it if you don't have any Libra in your chart, but if you have Libra in your chart, I'm saying I would be shocked if you didn't feel it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so yeah. they the eclipses stay in sister signs, so polar signs, over the course of a year, year and a half, sometimes two, depending on the transit. So since I believe at this point, we're about a year and a half in to the Aries Libra eclipses. Okay. So it's funny that you say over the past couple of years, over the past year, you've been dealing with these relationship themes because that Aries Libra axis is all about the sense of self, your own path on the Aries side, and then relationships and how those are playing a role in your life path. And so that's been just such a recurring theme for everybody, regardless of where and how it's impacting your chart over the past yeah. year and a half. Mm -hmm. So that I think is, is an overarching summary. And just to understand why they get kind of so hyped up, I would say why people talk about them so much is because if it is impacting your chart, Mm -hmm. These are these moments that basically can suddenly, rapidly shift the trajectory of your life. They're yeah. these really big life-changing moments, for lack of a better way of putting it, whether it's circumstances that, again, like I kind of alluded to earlier, that you played a role in. Maybe yeah. you had a hard conversation. Maybe you did put boundaries in place. Maybe you did quit a job or leave a relationship or start a new one. Or... It's situations that kind of happen to you, for lack yeah. of a better way of putting it. <laughs> and everything changes as a result of that, which to me is one of the reasons that I, I don't like to go too deep into it. I don't like astrology to um, kind of, I don't want to know so, so much in advance that it dictates the way that I'm behaving. Right, right. But I really like having a high level context to understand why certain things might be happening and how I can play an active role in it if I want it to ideally go in a direction that I, if it's going to shift, I would like to play a role in where it's shifting, you know? Right. <laughs>
Now for the for the uh, for the Libra um, eclipse, like how long does this transition? So the major stuff is going to occur in the beginning, and how we act on it, or how the eclipse, or how because you know the moon itself, you know they they talk about it all the time. It has energies. People that's why they joke around. People act that they're craziest when the moon, you know, there's a full moon because yeah. the energy from the moon just really affects humans. And there's been many scientific articles to back it up. You know how it it just changes is the whole way of thinking and reacting to things and and you know so how long does this eclipse last so is it when the eclipse comes your energies kind of gets you know affected and it's those changes at that moment that things that you start to do in that time frame where the energy when those energies are the strongest that are going to affect you and change maybe change your life or have the ability to change your life if you let it and you know for the future and on kind of thing yeah, great question. I find that pretty much every everything in astrology is macro and micro. So I think there's waves of that. And yeah. so typically what an eclipse window is, it's two eclipses. One's a new moon and one's a full moon. Those are all going to always going to be two weeks apart from each other. Yeah. And so usually an eclipse window is about a month long period. So you buffer okay. it with like a week on either end to yes. just recognize that there's going to be some sort of that kind of ripple effect on mm -hmm. either end of either eclipse. So okay. it's peaking on Wednesday. The actual eclipse is happening. The solar eclipse, new moon on Wednesday as we record this. So just for anyone listening, October 2nd, if you're <laughs> hearing this and expect you know, changes to happen, things to come up, conversations to be had, if you will, the couple days leading up to that. And I would say about a week following it as well. Okay. That's the micro scale of it. I think on the macro level or one of the macro levels, we'll say, because obviously that's an endless cycle. <laughs> but I think <laughs> with any any new moon and especially eclipses, it's also very helpful to look back six months when mm -hmm. the moon was last full in the same sign. So this is a new yeah. moon in Libra. When was it full in Libra last in the spring? And yeah. also as you're setting intentions and wanting to kind of shift the way things are right now with this new moon, you're looking ahead and it'd be really great to check in with where things are next yeah. spring when it's full moon in Libra six months from now. Oh, wow. So that's really good. So really, it could be it could make such a significant change in your life that you could actually like you could look back at it from a year from now and just see the the major change. So it's really it seems like people really should, you know, if they really want to know from an astrology point of view or yes, even even if it's not astrology, you know, kind of keeping a, a a journal of some sort mm -hmm. and looking at from the moment you you look at the eclipse and you see where you're at you know maybe start now because the new eclipse is coming and then see the major change that you've made over the course of that time the following year you know and most likely you know if someone's really into the eclipse and they're really into astrology and they also are going with their inner vibes because that's the main key there are a lot of skeptics out there but if you are open to it that's the th that's the key that i've learned people who are open are the people who get affected positively the most because they are open and the energies feel that and they go directly to those people because they're not being blocked the, their their chakras everything is open and they go right to those people who are open to change, open to astrology, open to spiritualness. And those are the people who get really affected positively, I think, the most. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I think I think so much of it is the mindset, the different mindset, which we both know will directly impact your frequency, your energy, whether you believe in those things or not, we are all energy and science yes. tells us that. Yes. And your mindset greatly impacts the energy that you are putting out and the energy that you're feeling. And I do feel like when you stay open to the possibilities, you stay curious. Those are two huge, huge things in my life, adaptability, curiosity. They've yes. changed everything for me once I started to embrace them. Yes, I do believe it becomes this difference between believing things happen to you and believing that things are happening for you, with you, as a co-conspirator with the greater being, you know, whether it's God, whether it's yeah. the universe, whatever you call it, it's like, 
you are playing a role in the course of your life. And I think anybody who doesn't believe that probably isn't open-minded, you know? And, And I do feel like when we feel that things are happening to us, you probably aren't open to believing that a system like astrology could give you context. Yeah. And that's fine. I'm not saying that you have to be into astrology, but it is about being open to the fact that you do get to play some role in choosing the trajectory of your life. So it behooves you to be open to the possibilities and take accountability for, for where you're kind of steering it. Right. Oh, hundred percent. So if people are really into astrology and they're really into the eclipse, what can they do now to get the most out of this eclipse that's coming right now that will be here soon? Yeah. So I think with this one, kind of like we've been talking about the biggest overarching themes, there's a huge, huge concentration in Libra right now. There's a lot going on in Libra. And Again, it does not mean you have to have prominent Libra placements in your chart to feel this, but it's recognizing when that happens, Libra is the sign that deals with peace, with harmony, with balance, and with relationships. Mm -hmm. So those themes are very likely to be coming up for everyone right now. And I think the way that I would summarize it is those tough conversations that we were talking about, taking accountability for your role in relationship dynamics, having the, the hard conversation, taking responsibility for what you've been doing, maybe putting some strong boundaries in place, whatever that looks like. Yeah. That's probably what's going to be coming up right now. And the whole point of this is to restore balance, to create yeah. more harmony and peace in your life. And I think the biggest thing I would note to people, because there's probably a lot of fear surrounding all those first parts I just mentioned, is... Yeah it is very likely that you have a good reason that you've been putting those hard conversations and putting boundaries in place off up to this point. It's because it's probably going to rock the boat. It's probably going to do what Libra hates, which is create a little bit of disharmony or maybe upset people for a minute. Yeah. And I think the, the important thing here to recognize is that might happen. Yeah. But it is so that you can create that long-term peace and harmony in your life. Sometimes we do have to have those momentary, temporary periods of disruption to have the long-term lasting peace. Because something I I mentioned to you before we pressed record, which has just been coming up so prominently to me, is like, be honest with yourself. Are you really tricking yourself about keeping the peace right now in this relationship? Is it really peace if you're not feeling peace on the inside? Exactly. That's false harmony. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think so many people are victims of that. You know, so many people have so many, you know, they just want to keep the peace. So they just go with it because they don't want to disrupt anything. They just, you know, a lot of people like myself, I just like living in peace. I just like living in harmony. I don't like when things are disrupted, you know, and I try to do whatever I can to keep the peace within, you know, relationships. But sometimes, you know, when you're in relationships with people and the harmony you know like the person is doing things and you're just it's not it's not flowing well with you and you know you can only hold back for so long and then you know you know you're not then it's disrupting you it's disrupting your balance within your own self and if you want to look at uh, the energies your energy is going to get disrupted that means your overall health your overall mentality your overall spirituality you know you at work the way you react at home everything is going to be disrupted. So maybe those conversations, you know, are, are, are really beneficial because you don't want to, you don't want to make believe so many people make believe that's why you see so many interviews or you see so many videos on YouTube about, are they fake? The 10 signs that they're fake, you know, because that's what people do. They want to keep the harmony, but really is it harmony, you know? Yep. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not real peace. If you're, if it's to your own detriment, <laughs> you know, exactly. yeah, hundred percent. I now, I feel like that's probably one of the biggest things coming up. If I had to guess, just based on the transits with this eclipse, and it's really going to be about being honest with yourself and yes. stepping up to the plate. I think, and I think that it that's what needs to be done so many times for so many people because once you step up to the plate and once you get it out of your system and you're honest with yourself. I think so many positive things can come out of that, 
you know, because you have to be honest, like, like that, that's the key. Honesty is key. You know, like you said, it is so important to be honest with yourself. And so many people, you know, tend to not want to be honest with themselves because they, again, are fearful of what might happen, you know, but we, that goes back to the beginning of our conversation. And that's what people have to start really like listening to the entire conversation that we had, because once they get to that point, I think they're going to get to the point we're talking about right now what is having the courage to have those conversations and to create harmony and to create the inner peace, because that's what's important is your, your harmony and your inner peace. You're the one, again, has to become first, you know, and so many people have to realize that and get that belted in their head. They come first. And if they're not happy, then it's they can't they can't encourage others to be happy. They can't encourage others to be the best. They can't help others because they have to help themselves first. Yeah, there's a ripple effect. And I think mm -hmm. at a certain point, you're you're doing a disservice not only to yourself, but to the people around you that you're over yeah. here trying to please. You're doing a disservice to them by keeping them stuck in this dynamic, knowingly or unknowingly, you know, yeah, exactly. and I think just to, to tie it back to the beginning of our conversation and like just me stepping out of the autopilot, that was during a massive eclipse window for myself. Yeah. And it, it genuinely was because I had played pretend for so long, unknowingly, yeah, I created this life and I got to this point where I was like, whoa, how did I get here? What am I doing? And over my, you know, year and a half, two year eclipse window that was hitting my personal chart so hard. Yeah, I changed everything in my life, my life 180, yeah. but not by just sitting around. Exactly. It actually started to like really build up. I was like taking very micro steps and it started to get pretty unbearable until I yeah. took the big step that I had been putting off because of the fear. Right. Which was leaving my job in my, my situation. Yeah. You know, and, and I felt the same way. Like I told you, like I, I went through that autopilot stage also, and it wasn't until, you know, I just, it hit me one day and I realized I'm not, you know, I'm not happy where, where I am, you know, <laughs> And I, I need to make a change, you know, and it was that one person who kind of steered me in the right direction. And I went with it. I said, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I did it. And it brought me to a whole different journey, a whole different life. And, you know, sometimes we got to take those chances in life, you know, because it, without taking chances, you, you don't know, you know, you'll never be able to reach that level of success. You'll never be able to reach that level of happiness. You'll never be able to become the best version of you if you don't take chances, you know, and I think it's so important. It's so important. And it's, you know, I think for anyone listening to this, if you're on, if you're on the before side of this, <laughs> taking, taking uh, strides, making changes, all of that, just, yeah, I think we can personally really relate to you. And it's, it's challenging to be in that seat, but it's so, so worth it. Even if things do not pan out the way that you envision them, if you know that your situation needs to change and it does not feel good and you know you've outgrown it there's a million excuses that you can make up to stay there and none yeah. of them are worth it right <laughs> none of them I can tell you right now i made up every single possible excuse that i could to stay yes. and i was just this weekend reflecting with my husband how grateful i am that i am not surrounded by the circumstances that i was 2 3 years ago a hundred percent. I can't even imagine living that way anymore. It feels yeah. so far from who I am now. I know. And it's a great feeling because, and, and it's funny because you look back, it's like, wow, you know, I, I can't believe that I was living life like that. You know, I can't mm -hmm. believe I was accepting that. I can't believe that I was doing that. And then it's like, you know, give yourself a pat on the back, you know, like when you reflect back and you look at yourself now, after you've made all these changes and you've got out of autopilot, wow, you know, it's, it's a huge accomplishment and such a great feeling inside. Now you also, you created a um, program that's about to launch or did it recently launch? Can you tell me a little about that? Yeah. So we, we were in the throes of the first cohort of it when we spoke last time and we're yes. launching the second round of it here in the next couple of weeks, starting in mid-October. 
Um, so the long story short is it's called Empowered Entrepreneurship. And it's myself with my human design and astrology background partnering up with a marketing and media agency and basically just both getting to stay in our zone of genius and support mm -hmm. really intuitive entrepreneurs who are looking for a way of marketing and operating in their businesses that actually energetically aligns with them. It's not this yeah. cookie cutter strategy or approach that maybe works for a lot of people and they're feeling very frustrated why it's not working for them. It's about looking yeah. at their energetic makeup. That's the part that I play a role in. And then Caitlin, who is my uh, counterpart in this, she'll take that information and use her marketing genius to, to really help them find a strategy that's actually going to sustainably work for their business. It's uh, the last round was so fun and <laughs> we were like, we have to do this again. So yeah. we're, we're launching another round of it here in a month and we've condensed it this time because we, the first round was the first round and now we know we can do it in a shorter window, still provide yeah. the same level of depth and not get, you know, stuck in the holiday madness as well. Right. Right. Now, where can people find out more and how could they sign up for this? Yeah. So I can, do you want me to send you the link so we can put it in the show notes of this? Yeah, I mean, that definitely. I think yeah, that's yeah. probably the best way to do this. Um, otherwise, I would say check out my Instagram, Claire period Campania, and I'm going to have it in my um, bio. It'll be the one that's titled Empowered Entrepreneurship. So that's definitely <laughs> the best way. Awesome. Now tell everybody about your services that you provide. And I'd love to, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there that would love to learn more about the services you provide because they could use them. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. I think right now where I'm at, this is always evolving because again, I like to evolve. I like it. I like not just my relationships to evolve. I like to uh, yeah. let my business offerings evolve with what feels best to me too. And currently I am still doing birth chart and human design readings. So those mm -hmm. are standalone. You can book a birth chart reading. You can book a human design reading. Um, those are both on my site and what those entail are basically just a key takeaways sheet. That's going to yeah. have the, the core information that you want, plus an hour of a Zoom call where we actually talk through it live. You can ask questions, all of those things. Um, and then I also take it a step deeper. So typically the precursor is having one of those readings, yeah. but then my actual self-discovery coaching is when I work with people over about a four month window. We can also do it in an eight month period if that just feels better to space it out differently mm -hmm. for more integration. But uh, it's essentially unpacking every single layer of your charts over that time period. Because what happens is some people are totally fine with getting their chart read and that's exactly what they needed. There are other people who once they see and they open that Pandora's box, they need to know more and they need to understand themselves more. And I think um, for those people know that I'm here for that more customized coaching because it's it's yeah. a lot to unpack and it can't be covered in one hour. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if where can people find you on your website so they can like, you know, sign up to these services and learn more about you and so forth? Yeah. So clairecompagna.com is my website. And the work with me page is if you just click any of the buttons on the work with me page, it'll take you to the uh, actual checkout page, which will have all three of those offerings listed. Oh, very cool. This has been amazing, Claire. I thank you so much for coming on the show today. I love having you on. You have such great impact. You're, you're, you just have a very bubbly energy. You know, I could feel your positive energy just by speaking with you today. And you just have so much knowledge to share. And I think it's, you know, amazing what you're doing. I just give you kudos. And I think, you know, it's, it's great that people understand, you know, the connection between astrology and our life and how accurate it is. Because, you know, people, and it, once they start learning about astrology, they, that's when they, you know, you, it's like, you're like, wow, you think about your life at, to the present moment. And if you go, if you look at the astrology of your sign and, 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 and you as a person, it will be on T to a core and it just blows your mind, you know, and, and just that tells you that how powerful it is and how accurate it is. And, and, you know, it's just something that I think everybody can like benefit from uh, to it to a hundred percent. I agree. I'm like, I, I get that there's different modalities for different people, but I also was once a skeptic and, 
Yeah, exactly what you said. It's one of those things. I always quote my husband because he has a lot of a lot of Capricorn placements for anyone listening in here. <laughs> um, so it, something that he said, I'll never forget when I showed him his chart the first time was, well, now you know. And <laughs> it, it's really that. It's like you you can't deny your own experience with it, whether you, you know, want it to have very firm evidence and support it. That to prove all of these things it's telling you or not. It's like, it's holding a mirror up to you. And if you're denying that it is, you're probably, it's worth looking into why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Well, this has been great, Clara. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I just really enjoyed today's talk. And I thank you so much for pouring out so much of your knowledge today and, and you know, hitting a topic that's so well needed to, you know, people for people to hear and understand and really absorb. And hopefully it'll impact a lot of people's lives today in a positive way. Yes, that is always my hope. So, I mean, thank you again for having me. I always love these conversations. Yes, thank you for coming. Have a great day. Thanks.